friends at Tivoli Brewing Company and the Department of Communication Arts and Sciences at MSU Denver, this is Unfiltered. And here are your hosts, Jay Schrader and Dr. Samuel J. Sorry, uh, uh-huh. I can't control them, especially no. when we're not in the same building. No, no, no. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you two know that this is unfiltered for a reason. Uh, we don't have, there are no stops uh, that we make. We tend to just go wherever the conversation goes. Jay and I have some talking points. Obviously, we wanted to be able to do this in person with you two. But as soon as we get out of this, uh, you will be on the short list of places we got to come and drink and talk in person. So, Awesome. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, go ahead and we'll kind of, uh, welcome you two to the show. Uh, we're going to let you kind of introduce yourselves and we'll just go from there. So coal mine, uh, Avenue brewing, we're here with Erica and with Manny, uh, would you two mind introducing yourself and we'll jump right in. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm Manuel. I am the, uh, head brewer and co-owner of coal mine Avenue brewing company. And this is Eric. <laughs> I'm Erica. I'm a co-owner, manager, head janitor. The better half? Yeah, well, the other half at least. Okay, okay. And, and who's the, who's the puppy child? He's one of our... Uh, he belongs to one, one of our, our beer tenders. tenders. And it's his dog. Oh, oh okay. Not your dog. 105 no. pounds of uh, enthusiasm. And he's all standing yeah. on one thigh. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Now, you guys, when you guys were trying to set up a the brewery down there, you guys put a lot of effort into being a dog friendly brewery from the get go, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. There was a lot of, a lot of media attention about that. Cause it seemed like it was going to fly pretty quickly and then a little rocky from there. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good uh, way to sum it up in a nutshell. Yeah. 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 We don't have to go too deep into it. I just, I, yeah. I, we have a, my wife and I have a condo down by where you guys are that we, started our family in, and um, it's a rental unit now, but we're down there pretty regularly. So um, I was always tracking it, thinking to myself, if the breweries that were all in that neighborhood were there 10 years ago, we probably never would have moved out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny. We've actually had um, somebody say that they lived here when we first put up the coming soon signs in 2017, and then they moved away, and then they moved back, and just in time for us to open. <laughs> So, yeah. cause it took a while. So who, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Manuel. Go ahead. There was a lot of uh, zoning issues that we had to go through. We basically had to get the place rezoned. Uh, it was zoned in such a way that we could have had a brew pub or a tavern here. So we could have opened a restaurant, bar, basically. Um, the rezoning was really to get it to allow us to open a production brewery. And while doing that, we also had zoning written in specifically for our off-leash dog area. So, um, and the, the yeah. reason, if I can interrupt, the reason for that is we were told pretty much from the get-go, um, we, this was right around when Denver quit allowing dogs in their tap rooms. We were told pretty much from the get-go by everybody at, at Jeff Co. Zoning, like, hey, heads up, it sounds like Jefferson County is probably going to follow Denver. Um, oh, they're probably just waiting for one little incident like Denver had with the one dog on one table and one brewery got the whole thing shut down. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we thought it was worth rezoning first not to have to open a restaurant. And secondly, in the event that Jefferson County said, okay, no more dogs at craft breweries, our zoning would protect us from, we'd be exempt from that basically. So had you started doing anything at that point? I mean, were you, were you in construction? Or? We couldn't start construction until zoning was finished. Yeah. How long of a process did it take to get through all of this paperwork? About eight months. And at that time, were you making beer at home? What was going on? Like, were, I'm, I'm assuming you were making beer, but at what scale? Oh, five gallons at a time. Okay. Okay. So let's jump back, I guess, before that. Um, what got you into it, you two? Obviously, you're, you're kind of partners in crime when it comes to this. Uh, there's got to be a love of craft beer, but uh, I know that you, you were doing some home brewing. Um, at what point did that start, uh, Manuel and, and Erica, either one? Uh, uh, when, did the, when did you catch we, that bug? Yeah. Before we opened here, I was home brewing for around 10 years or so. Um, and we were both working corporate jobs, um, you know, and, and that was, eh, you know, the, the pay, but 
but it, neither one of us really enjoyed what we were doing. We were just working for our free time at that point. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, we started talking about opening a brewery. Uh, you know, before that, we, we always wanted to, we'd get home from our corporate jobs. And our dogs would, you know, be happy to see us and then go somewhere, but then didn't want to leave the dogs again um, after we had been gone all day. So, you know, we always wanted some some place where we could just walk our dogs to, have a beer, let the dogs run some energy off and, and play. And uh, so that idea, that was kind of the seed of it. And we started getting a little more serious about, you know, what would a business plan look like for this? And, and you know, can this be a viable business? And where would we want to be? And um, so fast forward to, I want to say 2000, October 2014, maybe? Uh, Erica got laid off from her job. So um, she got, a you know, her severance and, and we thought, well, I guess we're doing this. Um, let's move forward. So we started, uh, really started going after financing and finding our location. Our location was one where we knew we wanted to be uh, in a place that was underserved, uh, an area that was underserved. And we also knew that we wanted to be in a suburban neighborhood because that was what we wanted for us. We were out in the suburbs wanted a place where we could walk our dog to. Um, so we ended up here in Littleton off of Kipling and Coal Mine. So what building or, or what space did you guys take over in that strip mall over there? It used to be the Montessori school. Dated yeah. a girl that worked there. Yeah. It's funny. We've got some, uh, some people that come in every now and then. We've got a few regs and every now and then we'll have someone come in. They go, I used to go to the daycare here. Yeah. Yeah. Drink. Like yeah. that's awesome. The, that's the wood actually you see behind me was uh, repurposed from the fence that was around the old playground. So we did oh, that's cool. A lot of our tap room um, decor, and we built all of our tables out of it. So it's right kind on. of people come in that are familiar with the space. We even had one guy who said, "Oh, I painted that fence once because the back of it's painted like an orange color." That's so, hilarious. Well, like, well, you probably painted the underside of this table then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Jay and I have a real appreciation for folks that uh, have places down south. I mean, I'm about half a mile from the Peak View uh, boys, and I know you two know them really well, Sean and Justin and AJ. So uh, it's just nice to have, uh, like you said, the underserved beer drinking population of South mm -hmm. Denver metro area. Uh, that's fantastic. So, I mean, when you opened up, then was Locavore around? Uh, I, I guess yeah, I'm yeah. Locavore has been around for a while. Five or six years old six now. Years, yeah. And then what else? Hey, you guys. Yeah, go probably were the first after that right because blue blue spruce came in after you blue spruce and, uh, actually came in remember? before us yeah um, they were right bef right before not too long before not too us. long we i think we opened in the same July, year and they opened okay uh i think february that same year huh. okay okay so we are technically the first production brewery in unincorporated jefferson county though because you look at Blue Spruce and uh, who else was somebody else here? Um, Locavore. Well, Locavore's not on Incorporated Jeffco. Um, oh, yeah. Um, who else is? Oh, uh, Ken Carroll in C4C. Larimer. Larry at Lodge. Larry at Lodge. Yeah. But, but yeah. even then, uh, Blue Spruce was open before us, but there were technically a brew pub, so they. Gotcha. Kitchen. So. Well that's a mouthful, but you should put it on your shirts. First, technically the first full production brewery in unincorporated right. Jefferson County. <laughs> it just flows, doesn't it? Just we, right off the tongue. <laughs> we try and go for these first. We're the first one to take that on. Um, we're the first off-leash dog park brewery in the state. There's a couple of, uh, there's a bar, a bar and grill, and then there's a really good tap room in Lafayette uh, called Romero's that has same concept but they're again a tap room yeah we're the first brewery to take that on um right on he's the yeah. first um, place that i've seen that does a dry sour a brute sour brute technically sour. Yeah. oh yeah. in unincorporated that? jefferson county 
anywhere, anywhere. Why did you, I mean, I, you say under, you say underserved, um, but just out of curiosity, uh, where were you living previous to moving to kind of where you are now? And, and is it, you know, living in the South Metro area, something you always wanted to do? We still live there. Uh, we live in okay. Bear Valley. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I'm, I live in Bear Valley. Where do you guys live in Bear Valley? Right uh, up the street from trailer. Oh, fuck, you guys were neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're like, I'm I live, in Amherst. Yeah, we're at um, Bates and Eaton. We can walk. Oh, my God. Through. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but we, you probably see us. My wife has, we have a 120-pound, um, I can't ever remember what kind of dog she is, uh, Irish Wolfhound Bloodhound Mix. Oh, is it like a blonde color? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I've totally, yeah. We have an Irish Wolfhound Mix, too. She's Shut a t- up. Yeah, she's Dane and Wolfhound. Uh, uh, we'll have to meet at the park at Trailer and exchange beer. Yeah, she things. doesn't like other yeah other well, dogs. But we, won't like, we don't have to bring the dogs. We'll out. <laughs> We'd be happy to meet you at yeah. the park, though. The place Just, is when this is yeah. all over. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That's Any kind of interaction, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I grew up in this neighborhood and left. And then my parents um, had a rental they were trying to unload. And my kids go to school up the street. My wife teaches up there all at the same school. So I was like, let's just do it. And we've been back now two years and there's unfortunately not a lot of beer on nearby. So, yeah. but it's good to know I've yeah. got a hookup now in the neighborhood. I don't know you know who neighbor. else lives in our neighborhood is uh, Tim from strange. Shut up. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's over on golden way. Yeah. Fuck. That's what? crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I am going to start a happy hour on the corner. Yeah. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> that is <laughs> awesome. The closest place then for us is uh, landlocked. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, I go, I go to Green Mountain. I prefer them, frankly, yeah. just their beer. But, yeah, landlocked is good. Landlocked. Yeah, Far we're friends with those guys and cool people. Yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. There's definitely a a, a a sense of I don't know if it's camaraderie, but um, or I don't want to say chip on the shoulder, but I like being part of the kind of South Metro beer drinking community. I've been trying to give the guys at Peak View uh, my business as much as possible. I missed I missed picking up the crowlers today because I went I was able to get to the liquor store, but um, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. It's very cool. So um, so your home brewing. Uh, I guess at what point did you think you were actually onto something as opposed to you know. I, at what point, I guess, did you think you were good enough as a brewer to to become a production brewery? Like, how do you go from just tap room ideas to all the way to production brewery? What what, what was it about what you were making that you thought, or that gave you that confidence? Um, you know, it was just some beers that I was really able to start nailing after a while. Um, New Belgium came out a long time ago with a, a beer called the Coco Mole. Okay. In a while, they'll re- re-release that, and it's kind of a chocolate, cinnamon, pepper stout, uh, you know, like a mole mm-hmm. inspired beer. And um, so I loved that beer uh, when it first came out. I bought it as much as I could, and then when I went back and to the liquor store that I normally go to, and they didn't have any, and didn't know when it would be back, I thought, oh no. So. I started checking different places, buying as much as I can so I could have it on stock and uh, just on hand. And when I couldn't find it anymore, I'm like, well, now what am I going to do? So I started trying to make my own version of that beer. And it was a couple of tries before I pretty much nailed it. And, you know, it tasted, it was pretty much same as that beer and it was kind of around this time that we um we had fairly recently moved into the house in bear valley uh from a town home and we were all about house parties and we had some friends that were home brewers and so we would throw a bakatoberfest at the house and do a lot nice. of blind homebrew taste testing and get feedback from people <laughs> and um kind of tried out some recipes that way and that's been the the base of a couple of the beers that we've we've done commercially now and we've uh you know and part of that too is we started realizing that we'd have our beers and we we'd buy a bunch of beers too for everyone you know just so that everybody has something that they like to drink and people were drinking the homebrew more than they were the the Uh yeah so 
Just just those kind of things. No, that's a good In, sign. Informal research, huh? Yeah. You always have friends that'll help you with that stuff too. So Yeah. It reminds <laughs> me of the story about like they scattered all the different types of seating at Stapleton. Um, and they didn't tell you that there was video cameras on them, but they that's how they decided on what kind of seating to use at DIA. Like they were spying on you. So you guys were spying on your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, and once it started getting a little more serious, you know, dialing in the recipes, taking them for for real feedback from brewers and you know there's always the home brewer that comes in and brings their beer. He's like, try this and tell me what you think. And you know, <laughs> I was that guy for a little bit and but you know, um I got a lot of honest feedback from them because they knew where we were going and I'm sure that was probably happening a lot but happening a lot during that time. Oh, I'm going to open a brewery. Oh, okay. You know. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So I guess why why what kind of conversation were you two having to decide to um focus on a production brewery? I know that, you know, location obviously played a part of that, but I'm assuming that's something you talked about early on, uh what kind of model you wanted. So how did you get to the production brewery as the conclusion? Well, we, we both, I think he said this earlier, we wanted out of our corporate jobs and we wanted to do something that we enjoyed um, and that we were passionate about because we knew most of the things that we were interested in were not going to be like super lucrative, you know, and like companies. So like, well, if you can make money or you can have a good time doing it. There's rarely a, a business where you can have it both ways. So I was making great money in my corporate job. I totally could have taken all my licenses and gone to Schwab or Fidelity or whoever and just kept making the money I was making. But that's, that kind of wasn't where we were focused. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, where we were approaching midlife or kind of at midlife around that time and starting to think like, okay, well we can make the decision now to keep working nine to fives and save for retirement and then retire and do that or we can build something that we can kind of transition into sort of a hobby for retirement like hopefully by the time we're ready to retire all of our loans will be paid off and we can bring enough in through this just to kind of keep us you know with a roof over our head and enjoying what we do so um yeah and then we were hanging out and they were that was around the boom around 2013 when like they were just popping up three a week we're opening So we were having a blast being craft beer people just going around and getting flights. That was amazing. Like, oh, sample of everything. We had never seen that at a bar, you know. That was just a totally unique thing. And I think what sealed the deal was, well, we were were pretty centered on a craft brewery. And then I was out, and this was before I got laid off. Um, We were out, out in California. I was out there for work. He flew out for the weekend. Um, just to kind of hang out around San Diego. And we ended up at Stone in Escondido. And uh, yeah, we really were just enjoying the shit out of walking around with our beers and these beautiful gardens and like, oh, let's see what this trail, where it goes. And they were setting up a wedding and like, we both kind of looked at each other and went, this would be perfect if we had the dogs with us. And then it was like, you could just see the light bulbs, like we should have a craft brewery with an off-leash area so people can bring their dogs and let them play. Sam, have you ever been to that stone in Escondido? It's fucking amazing. Yeah. No, it's but like I wish gardens for beer drinkers. They just don't. Yeah, it's gorgeous and it's yeah. huge. It's huge. Yeah. I, uh, I traveled to La Jolla for work one year and was only there four nights. And I think I ended up there three times in four nights because my wife flew out for the last night. And man, we, it's amazing. Yeah. It's I can see that being a great, a great inspiration for starting a brewery. Um, especially in a place like Colorado, if you could take that concept and apply it, especially in the suburbs, right? Because all we're stuck with is concrete and King Supers. Mm-hmm. Um, so is the dog park that you guys have, is it still technically able to stay open? Or No. 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 Nothing, I mean, it's nothing's open, our, just to go beer only. It's part of our tap room. Yeah. yeah. The dog park is considered occupiable seating area. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, I guess let's, let's jump into that now. <laughs> you know, something a little bit more depressing than uh, the wonders of, of Southern California. Um, 
what's going on now? Uh, you know, I guess what, what kind of planning, if any, went into what's happened in the last six weeks for you two and, uh, and, and how are you managing to, to ride this thing out? Well, I mean, for us, um, you know, our whole thing has been from us going to hang out in tap rooms and craft breweries. It was all about hanging out with people and talking to the, to the bartender and the brewer and, and the guy next to you and just meeting new people. And, and we did that a lot. Um, the dog park, right. That's, that's something that was very close to us and, and uh, we wanted to do right. Everything about our tap room is designed for in-house consumption and to draw that because that's the feel we wanted. Um, we wanted to be that neighborhood place where, the community can gather around and help you help you support the charities that you believe in and, and make friends and get you know the regulars that you come to know uh the dogs we, we've come to know you know a lot of dogs out there um we have almost a thousand dogs registered yeah so that's awesome so it's kind of depressing for both of us i think to to be in a tap room where there's there's no activity there's no dogs out in the yard, you know. Um, now, fortunately, we did open with the the crawler machine mm-hmm. uh, from Crowling Rental Company, and so we have that option. Uh, we had just ordered a bunch of glass before we had any idea that this was going to happen, so we had a bunch of a uh, bunch of growlers and a bunch of the thirty two ounce howlers. I was getting excited for summer because we we had an amazing February and March was really ramping up. Yeah. An excellent month for us because the nice weather, it's been so mild over the last couple months. We were really getting busy. Like, I better start stocking up for summer. So thankfully, I had just got an order of howlers that was delivered like March 10th and they're all gone. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, we're going through cans now through the 32 ounce cans. Mm-hmm. Um, are you getting a lot of people that are, I mean, coming up and just getting like, you know, the to go stuff, or are you doing mostly delivery? Which, which one is having it's more? It's definitely more of the, the pickup, more okay. people coming in, you know, um, again, since we're in, in this neighborhood, we even have people that will kind of walk over here with their dog and pick up some beer. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, you guys are very walkable. You've got, Mm-hmm. lots of housing to the north lots of condos and apartments and stuff to the south and people coming from all directions yeah. so hopefully that's um sustainable for you guys to some degree i mean there's a lot of breweries that aren't as walkable as you are or, or right. you know their walkability is less less suburban and and uh residential as it is like hey get off the light rail yeah. and walk to me so I've yeah. been a little surprised that we aren't doing more deliveries, but it, it kind of makes sense. People uh, have been locked in for some people locked in immediately when this started, you know, like day one. So they've been in their homes for a month now and now it's becoming like a destination. Like, like we were before, like we're a destination for different reasons now. Like, Oh, we're, we just got to get out of the house. Where can we go? Let's go to coal mine and grab couple beers and how are you yeah. doing delivery is it is it are you letting employees put in those hours and getting some okay yeah we're trying to give as many hours to staff as possible yeah. um we actually were one of the lucky ones who got our ppp loan okay we received those funds in our account on monday all right so, really yeah we did furlough most of our staff but we've got three staff that we're keeping on full time and keeping them paid full time um, congratulations and everyone else um, was either mandatory quarantine, voluntary quarantine, or already on leave for reasons not related to COVID. So we kind of lucked out that the staffing worked out, and we've got people that have day jobs. So um, they're, uh, hi, Janelle. Uh, speaking of one of our essential staff. Um, so yeah, we, we really lucked out in that respect that we've got that loan that will cover us for about two months. Is that, you know, I was yeah, reading, I don't, well, no, Jay, I know you got the expertise in this as a banker, but I was, I was, no, I was listening. Uh, yeah. I was reading something this morning. Um, 
either the New York Times or the Atlantic that has kind of broke down the specifics of that loan um, and how it did handcuff small business owners in a lot of ways. Like it, like uh, 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 I think breweries and restaurants in particular, where um, you only you know, the the one loan program where you you you, you could. Uh, Get potentially, you know, not, not be handcuffed to it forever. If you use that money to pay your employees, but you basically cannot get rid of your employees. If you want to use that loan program, I mean, it was just, I guess I, I hadn't thought about the complexities of it until I really kind of looked at the details and I can see how that would, that would kind of fuck over a small business in ways that people wouldn't understand unless they're small business owners, I guess is what I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's okay. Like it, it worked out for us that it's, it's going to be beneficial um, the, the main rules with the loan that we got, and I applied for both loans, okay. um, heard back anything on the disaster recovery loan yet. We've really, that's been out on the industry boards. I applied for it the day the application went live. That was mm-hmm. April third and I haven't heard anything. Um, and I don't mm-hmm. know, like it, the, it's going to run out of money. I just, it's going to depend on how they decide who to give loans to. Um, and I think for that, that's another thing that we lucked out on is we are at a smaller bank. So we were able to get that uh, first loan, the PPP loan before it ran out of money, because we're probably one of the only clients at that bank. And um, we do have a loan with them. So banks are looking at businesses like, did they have a loan with me? Yeah. Then I'm going to let them have this versus some new account that doesn't have any kind of financial debt mm-hmm. obligation to the bank course the bank's going to give that money to you know the higher risk which is what we would be considered because we do have a loan with them but so we lucked out in several aspects there but yeah the the loan that we have now the two basic rules with that one is we have to use at least 75 percent of that for payroll Mm -hmm. uh, staffing and then the other 25 percent we can use for like rent mortgage um, or existing debt so it worked out that, you know, we have, that gives us about two and a half months of payroll um, and about a month of rent. Damn. Okay. Um. I mean, the good thing though is, is also where we looked out is before this hit, we were really starting to pick up. So we had a couple of really good months that yeah. gave us some cushioning too. Yeah. Um, we had know. about a two month cushion in our bank account. It's it's depressing. It, it sucks, but you know it could be worse. We could be doing better, but you know, talking to you know, it's a very close knit industry. Um, we could be doing worse. What are your thoughts on how the state has handled this? Whether that be the governor, whether that be um, Jefferson County, uh, knowing how big craft beer is in this state and how big of an industry, not just culturally but economically. Are you okay with how things have been handled? Do you wish it would have been handled differently? Just, you know, uh, hindsight, I guess, compared to three or four weeks ago. What what have we learned yeah. from this? That's a it's a tough call. Um, you know, I would love to have my tap room open uh, right now and, and be serving our regulars, have the activity here that we normally have that kind of keeps us sane. But on the other hand, you know, I – I have a, my father is somebody who could be at risk for this. And so I worry about him. So I, I don't know. Could they have handled it better? I mean, probably we could always, things can always be improved upon. Um, Did they make the right decisions with what was in front of them? I think the governor did. Jefferson County doesn't really step into that. They're they're such a big County. Um, They they kind of usually just just follow follow the state. Or, or sometimes I'll follow Denver. We were, we were really thankful that they didn't, that they're following Colorado more than. Denver. Yeah. Um, it is. It's, it's not, it's, I don't want to say mind boggling, but frustrating at times. Jay's uh, younger brother and I are best friends and he lives in Michigan. And so. I'm chopped liver. No, no, no. But the point being, I mean, I think, I think uh, I was never necessarily at the, Polis fan or what have you, I didn't really care much, but I feel a little bit safer being in Colorado right now than a lot of other states, right? As, as you know, uh, people consider, consider reopening and everything. Um, I just don't think that people quite understand uh, the severity of this, as you kind of pointed out, Manuel, uh, uh, Manuel, uh, like, 
I went to the grocery store today and there were people without masks on talking to each other two or three feet apart. And it's like, what, like, yeah, you may not be susceptible to it, but you could take it to somebody who is. And I guess I just expected more out of, uh, out of the human race, but apparently we're not there yet. We need to have a little bit of guidance from the top. So it's interesting. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's a shame that, that a political division exists so inherently in our society. Yeah. You know, I think, yeah. I compare, I compare the those parties to to Comcast. You know, there's a lot of <laughs> ideas on both sides. It's like, but you don't have to buy the whole package. That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. Thing. I just I want my that, it's kind of we have internet. a strict no politics talking policy in our tab yeah. Room, so I think I we're, dig it. we're not a political couple. Like. I think we both follow politics, but it's it's not something that I'm interested in debating because most people that are even mildly interested in politics have formed their opinion. Yeah. You're not going to change that. And arguing constantly is just not my idea of a good time. So, like, and I have, my mom is way on the left and my aunt is way on the right. And maybe that's where like I have the middle child syndrome, but oh, it's gotta be some good Facebook conversations though. You gotta, you gotta see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This is all your fault. No, it's all your fault. <laughs> like, well, oh even amongst God. our friends, we, you know, because we are, we, we don't really voice a lot of our opinions on certain yeah. things. Right. We, we have friends that are on both sides and sometimes it's really a whiplash looking at your Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just the best thing that it. I did was give up Facebook and social media for Lent, um, <laughs> which I try to do every year. And for a couple of days, I don't think I knew what was going on with COVID nineteen. Frankly, um, I blame Sam for dragging me back into the social webosphere uh, for our beer fest last weekend. Yeah, well, we needed you. Um, you know the stance yeah. I will take. It drives me nuts that I don't want to see, and this is about as political as I'm going to get. Why the hell does Yahoo have to put the spoilers for Mass Singer the day after it's aired? <laughs> Those and bastards. Now I'm always, and when I go to watch it, I already know what's going to happen. That pissed me off. That's my political <laughs> statement, and I'm sticking with it. I finally, I, I've yeah, been I trying to watch Tiger you, King. Man. I watched oh, Tiger yeah. this week finally. Like, but okay, there's a. <laughs> have you guys watched it? Have you two watched it? Yeah. yeah. I yeah, grew up in the middle the of the whole Iowa. mess. I watch. I grew up in the middle of BFE Iowa, though, and like I know those kinds of people, which is crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, it's crazy. They actually but... reference my hometown in it. They say that they went to, to Branson to sell some tigers. I grew up in Branson. Oh my god! Yeah, I forgot so about that. The yeah, those part. are my people. So wait, are you uh, are you Ozark fans? Have you watched Ozark? Oh yeah, yeah. we just finished uh, season three the other night. Three. Oh, you are <laughs> you're on top of it then. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're halfway we just through started starts. through this whole whole stay at home. Yeah, thing, we just right? started watching Ozark like two weeks ago. Yeah. We were like, it's yeah, so you good. Just look at each other, and you're like, what the hell are we gonna do now? Oh, let's I do know. this. Let's, yeah, let's try bought, to watch. I this. bought some new games for my Xbox 360. <sighs> oh yeah, I need to order. A, I keep yeah. telling my wife I'm gonna order a Switch because we haven't had the kids haven't had a video game system ever. Like yeah, our daughter and her yeah. fiance have a Switch, and they um they have pinball games. They have like 120 pinball games, so they'll take their TV and like set it, oh. turn it sideways. Yeah, and then the switch. Oh no way! You can pull them apart, yeah. and like the flippers, so the the top paddles are the flippers on the pinball game. So before we were quarantined, I was over there like once a week, just like playing pinball. It's really fun. No, it's. See, I got it's, my government cheese the other day, and I'm trying to figure out how to spend it. And I really don't want to like order through Amazon or. I thought you meant literal or, government cheese. I did too. No, he no, sent me no, that too. No. Yeah. I got. God, I, got, I haven't I got had that since I was a kid. Check. <laughs> I got my Trump check, and uh, I mean, I'm like, I, I'd rather spend it on businesses like yours, which is probably what's going to make me even a bigger alcoholic, because I'm just going to spend it all it's, on booze. Maybe it's but, government uh, cheddar. It is going to Machetta. I've heard, I've heard both. Let me ask you two then, I guess, as we kind of get ready to wrap this thing up, what, what should our listeners be doing? What would you like to see from the Colorado craft beer community? But also, you know, the craft beer, craft beer community across the country that listens to the podcast. What can we be doing as drinkers to help out our friends like you uh, get through this tough time, not knowing when the end is coming? Um, 
what should we be doing? Cause I know it's, you know, I know to go beers and delivery beers and all of that stuff, uh, uh, that can get us through a while. Is there something else we can be doing? Uh, you can purchase gift cards, uh, yeah. libraries. We mm -hmm. actually have the little like debit card style gift cards where you swipe it and it keeps your balance and all that. Okay. Uh, so you can get gift cards, merchandise. Everybody still has hats and shirts. And mm -hmm. you know, if you want to spend some of your uh, government cheddar on uh, some cool brewery swag, I know some um, of our vendors are advertising discounts. We actually just got a, a couple new styles of hats because our hat guys also trying to stay alive right now. Okay. So um, we went ahead and, and bought a new round of hats. So um, yeah, we also have a really cool thing that's going on just between, I think there's eight breweries and tap houses involved um, called craft revolution. Mm -hmm. And we have um, everybody has shirts and a punch card. So it's $75. You get a craft revolution, huh, craft revolution t-shirt and a punch card to go around to eight different places and get a free pint when they're everybody's back open. That's awesome. Nice. I love that shit. And you know, what sure. about, um, how about like porch, porch drops, right? Yeah. yeah. Bombs for your neighbors. Yeah. And introduce helping introduce people to breweries that maybe they haven't tried before. Um, you know, I think a lot of us are, we're all trying to do our own thing here and we all have something to offer. Um, you know, like for us, our most popular seller, one of our top beers is a hazy IPA, but outside of our own neighborhood, nobody really knows about it. Okay. You know, you have the heavy hitters in those, those categories. And, and I think we make a pretty damn good one. We always have two on at least, um, we've got the Peabody. And that's a double dry hop New England style IPA Ooh. German, which right now it's a triple dry hopped double New England style IPA with Sabro and Katu. And it's my favorite batch yet. And this uh, is the tangerine cream Peabody. That looks yummy. Now, I know one of you guys is, is a little against the hazy. I've come around. I've come <laughs> around. I admit Somebody's I've come been around. listening to our podcast. Dude. Yes, I've come around. Yes. Um, it's hard not to. I actually just ordered. We uh, ordered kits from uh, the Brooklyn Brew Shop. They were our guests this week, and they. Nice. Uh, I don't. You know who they are? Have you two heard of them? The I think Brooklyn so, yeah. Brew Shop. Yeah, they're it's a it's a husband and wife, and they specialize in making these one gallon home brew kits. One gallon. That's it. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, yeah, but they send you. Uh, they gave Jay and I each um, uh, uh, a box, and it's like. Man all of the equipment that you need. And then if you want to re up, it's like 12 bucks. I think if you want to like, you know, the ingredients or another one, oh, yeah. well, well, I got a, I got a double dry hopped, uh, hazy coming my way. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it with my daughters. Uh, I think it's going to arrive today. So we're going to, that's going to be a, the, the father's dad, uh, activity tomorrow is making beer. <laughs> so, nice. I don't have shit coming, Sam. I still haven't gotten a confirmation email on mine. No, you had to tell, you don't have to send your address. You got to send your address. I what? did send him my What'd address. What'd you order? Yeah, exactly. Jay, what I ordered the jalapeno saison. Oh yeah, you did. You did. The jalapeno saison. We've got a cranberry ginger saison right now. Oh, yeah. how far were you to? How far we all deliver? What's your? We deliver to a wow. Littleton address because we don't have a sales tax license for any other jurisdictions. Okay. But you know, if we sell it out of the tap room, I mean, you're our neighbor. I know. I know. I was gonna say, Close. I live in Bear Valley. We can. We can make that happen. Out. Yeah. I might uh uh as uh, pick up your order for you. I might have the the crew. Uh, have you ever heard of Have you heard of the handoff app yet at all? Uh uh. Okay, so they were a sponsor of uh the Sip Beer Fest that we hosted last week, and yeah. um they are Denver based. It's two guys uh downtown, two dudes that developed this app, and they it's not like Drizzly in the sense that um there's their own it's not, they're not paying somebody to deliver instead actually it would be your employees who deliver the beer so i might have them reach out to you because they're trying to to talk to people but they got copper kettle and holly daily and i think woods boss is on board now um cool. yeah uh, they're they're doing some really cool shit and their app's really awesome because it, fo it it functions like a messaging app as opposed to a different kind of like a drizzly app uh so you just like text the app and say hey i want beer what beers are available in my area actually i think sean uh uh sean peters is getting set up with them 
them this week. They said, cool. so, yeah, okay. that's good because I, I immediately was looking into like Drizzly and that kind of stuff. And I know some places are using it, but the executive order from governor Polis was really clear that you can't use a third party delivery. It has to be delivered by an employee of the brewery. Yeah. So that's a really ingenious uh, fix. I'm going to actually text Tommy right now. So, uh, yeah, I'll send him your way. All right. I know Jay's got a meeting and I can hear my wife yelling because uh, I have a hard stop. Sorry guys. I got to go. This homeschool thing my, is a pain in the ass. My real Holy job. Shit. Did you even have a beer? I mean, Jay, I've had two. <laughs> yeah, I heard him crack them. Oh, heard him. <laughs> well, I'm down in the basement. I can hide down here. I've got a mini, mini fridge in the closet. So, yeah, that's, gonna be my, that's my government cheese purchase right there is a new fridge in the basement. Oh, shit. My God. I just realized hey, my wedding ring I don't know where it is. Oh. That's fantastic. Um, I just brought the trash in, so that could be where it is. But anyhow, Erica. Manny, Erica, thank you. Thank you both so much. Yes. We'll come over and see you. Uh, Jay will probably say, cheers, 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 cheers. All right, we'll put we'll this up. You, we'll see you at the playground. When they come to tea